When it comes to digital cameras, a bigger sensor usually means a better performing camera, especially when it comes to low light. And this has been the biggest problem with smartphone cameras. Because they're so tiny, the camera sensors in them also end up being really tiny. But every once in a while, someone tries something big. And the most recent company to do that is Xiaomi with their brand new Xiaomi 12S Ultra. Developed in collaboration with legendary camera maker Leica, they're the latest phone maker to try cramming a massive camera sensor into their flagship smartphone. And what they ended up with was a smartphone with a massive 50 megapixel, one inch Sony IMX989 camera sensor. For context, a one inch sensor is what you'd usually find in an actual camera, you know, something like the Sony RX100, not your average smartphone. The 12S Ultra also features a 48 megapixel ultra wide and 48 megapixel telephoto camera that offers five times optical zooming and a max zoom of 120 times. But I'm not interested in that. What I'm most interested in is what that one inch sensor is capable of. But you know, what does it mean to have a one inch sensor? Like, how will that affect like practical photography, especially on a smartphone, right? Where so much of whether your photo turns out good or not depends on the brain, computational photography, right? Um, well, that's what I want to find out. I don't have a lot of time with this device, but I do have it tonight. And I've also brought along this, an iPhone 13 Pro, which is sort of like one of the best sort of standard smartphones, not, not one with a massive sensor. So we're going to see how it stacks up and I'm really excited to find out like what that looks like. So let's go. Yes, even though this smartphone won't be launching in Malaysia, Xiaomi Malaysia has graciously lent us this smartphone for a couple of hours. So obviously, I dove head first into the main reason you'd want a big sensor in the first place, better low light. It's simple, a bigger sensor lets in more light which usually equals better low light photos. But since smartphones usually have tiny sensors, their solution to this is to rely on the brain of the phone instead. This is where features like night mode come in, where the phone takes controlled long exposure shots, you know, often stacking multiple images to produce a single clean image. And in my opinion, it has been one of the biggest advancements in smartphone photography in a long time. This tech has also gotten really good, especially on flagship phones like the iPhone 13 Pro. But the thing is, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra sensor is about double the size of the one that's in the iPhone 13 Pro. Surely it should perform better. So right now, first thing I want to do is like, I want to test color, right? So we're going to take this, this shot, this uh, graffiti. Uh, and the interesting thing about the, the 12S Ultra is that there are actually two sort of Leica modes that you can take. One is Leica Authentic and one is Leica Vibrant. Uh, I'm going to go with Authentic because real recognize real. <laughs> To simulate real-world shooting, and because you know I didn't really have a lot of time, I also left everything on auto and let the phones figure out the best settings and night mode durations to use for each scene. All I did was point and shoot. I think I think one of the nice things uh, that this has is that shutter sound. So like when I press the button, this is what it sounds like. It's not, it's not quite the same as like the Huawei Leica shutters. Uh, that one sounds a bit more like a leaf shutter. I don't, know, I don't know what this sounds like. Can you recognize the Leica camera? If you can, let me know in the comments below. After about an hour wandering the streets of KL, it was finally time to look at the results. And honestly, it was quite the eye-opener. I think the Xiaomi 12S Ultra takes some of the most naturally pleasing low light images I've ever seen from a smartphone. Major strengths include very low noise, very little sharpening, and just a very natural bokeh. Take this shot for example. At first glance, it might look like the iPhone photo is just way sharper than Xiaomi's. And in a sense, that's true. But if you punch in and try to understand why, the iPhone's sharpness just looks way more artificial to my eyes. The 12S Ultra's image has this natural smoothness to it while remaining tech sharp. And the texture is just so impressive and it's not something that I'm used to seeing from a smartphone. Here, you get a great demonstration of how good the noise level on the 12S Ultra is compared to the iPhone. There's just a staggering lack of luminance noise and sharpening in the 12S Ultra's image which just adds to that natural look. And you'll see this constantly in image after image even when the shadows get darker and darker. It's so impressive. 
The 12S Ultra is also incredible at highlight control. Just look how well it retains the colours in the neon sign and even some of the details in the light bulbs without significantly underexposing the rest of the image. But I think the biggest weakness of Xiaomi's big sensor is the sheer size of it. While this big size is great at giving you really nice natural bokeh with a smooth roll-off, the fact that it's a smartphone rears its ugly head once again. Because there's no real way to control the physical aperture of the lens, the shallower depth of field thanks to the larger sensor can sometimes get in the way of the photo. In this photo for example, while the neon sign is sharp, the information panel thing on the side is very soft and I suspect it's because those are too far from the point of focus which was the neon sign. And this is something you won't see in like the iPhone's image. It's a recurring problem, especially if the subject is really close to the camera or if the thing that you're trying to photograph is not, you know, flat or along the depth of field line. You'll see a dramatic fall off in sharpness. But it's quite hard to argue with how good the photos still are in low light. I mean, just look at how some of these turned out. Okay, at the end of the day, it's important to remember that this isn't a super comprehensive test of the phone's entire camera system. I just didn't have a lot of time with it. But even with my brief time with the phone, I can already see a big problem with the other cameras in the system, notably the inconsistencies with colour when you switch between lenses. I just wanted to find out what a 1-inch sensor on a smartphone could do, especially if you want to take photos in really dark scenarios. And honestly, for this particular purpose, I'm struggling to think of another phone I've used that can do a better job. It's f***ing amazing. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see a full review of this smartphone, which, you know, it's kind of hard to do because it's not coming to Malaysia, right? So we don't have the price and it's hard to determine value. Um, but if you want to see more content about this, let us know and we'll see if we can try and get it back from Xiaomi again. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think of the Xiaomi 12 S's um, photos? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think it's better than the iPhone or do you still prefer the iPhone's photos? Uh, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to us uh, and hit the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos. We're also on social media like Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram um, but our home on the internet will always be at searchandshow.com. So until the next video, I'll see you then. Bye!